World Barista Championship semi-finalist, number 11, Barista Champion of United Kingdom, John Gordon! So John's just exchanging some instructions to the head judge so that they can pass on to the judges so they know what they're doing. John? I'm back. Yeah, sorry. How I can I miss you? Jeez. I know. I'm here. Um, listen, you know how to do this stuff. I'm going to wish you the very best of luck. Congratulations on semi-finals. Thank you. The floor is yours. Okay. You guys ready? You guys good? Time. Welcome judges, if you would please place the headphones in front of you over your ears and keep them on for the entire performance today, that would be fantastic. Ruki, I've got some water over here for you as well. All right, check you guys can hear me. Fantastic. So today is about creating a complete sensory experience using not just coffee, but also a full range of our senses. In life, our sensory development begins very early on. Prior to birth, the growth of taste buds begin at around eight weeks old. At 21 weeks, taste development begins, and then later, taste preference. And that preference starts with sweetness. Now, a couple of weeks after we are born, genetically an awareness of bitterness develops, and then later on, an acceptance of sourness or acidic tastes begin. Now, when it comes to us tasting coffee, we do our best to control or alter parameters within the coffee itself to enhance or change flavors. But we neglect the effects of our surrounding environment that can change what our brain perceives. So to aid in the experience that I have you first is sound. With the headphones, you'll be able to hear me clearly. And while you're evaluating each drink, there'll be music playing, different music, to be able to increase your focus and minimize any distractions. So, uh, I'm going to start with sweetness, just like our sensory development, and that sweetness is going to be focused around the espresso. So if you could write this down for me. And then beginning, just give it a really good stir as well, please. Uh, we have tropical fruits and tropical fruit sweetness, but more specifically mango sweetness. It has a lovely, silky, smooth, crisp body. And then we're going to finish with a fantastic passion fruit acidity. Now, when you guys have followed protocol, what I'd like you to do is after that, give it a really good swirl as well, and then have a third sip as well. And here you're going to, and also smell as well. There's, uh, this changes a little bit, and there's a little bit of uh, preserved plums in there as well. So, um, now, before we move on to that, I'd like you to taste three solutions. Now, each solution here is formulated to replicate only the intensities of the attributes found within the coffee and not the flavor. There's one for you as well. Now, we're going to start on the right-hand side with the green. Now, this is a, um, a sour solution. Now, this is a representation of the acidity found in the coffee. In the middle is bitterness, and then we're going to finish on your left-hand side, which is sweetness in the red. Now, here, each solution is going to aid in that expectation of the espresso. Now, when you've tasted each solution, I'd like you to grade that intensity using the scale here on your left-hand side and the little chess pieces uh, in accordance with the solution as well. So go ahead with that. I'm going to uh, play you some music now, and then I'll be back with your espresso. Eyes wide open for for this moment, we own tonight. Every day we're going to do we do it. See the black clouds fall out of fear. Perfect darkness, baby. Perfect darkness is all I can see. Yes. 
at the same time as well. Let's have a big round of applause for John's Espresso Course! You guys can hear me again? Fantastic. So if you could write these down for me, these are going to be for the cappuccino. We have a, a chocolate milkshake in the beginning, a little hint of malt, uh, there's a nice buttery mouthfeel, almost kind of uh, a bit biscuity as well. And then we're going to finish with a dark chocolate kind of bitterness. Now, I'd like you to evaluate the cappuccinos in two sections. Do your visual and your depth um, first, and then hold off on taste until instructed. So now we move on to bitterness. Now plants have developed systems to protect themselves from being eaten by producing toxic and poisonous bitter compounds. Now these bitter compounds are initially disliked or rejected by us due to a genetic safety mechanism. Thank you. But later on in life we learn to accept and appreciate some bitter tastes that are found in such things as beer and of course coffee. Now that level of bitterness accepted will vary from person to person depending on our bitterness threshold. Here there are so many contributing factors like gender, age, and genetics. Now bitterness that I really appreciate is chocolate with a really high percent of cacao. Here's where the cappuccino comes in. That same sweet espresso now turns into a chocolate milkshake. A little bit of malt, a buttery biscuit in the middle we'll and that dark chocolate in the finish we'll there you go. thank you very much let's give it up for john's cappuccinos <laughs> Ever 
gonna slow down you got going on high notes eyes closed holding on and I don't want another day to break and take off steal off Before we move on to the signature drink, I'd like you to once again taste three more solutions. If I can have the cappuccinos cleared as well, please, that would be fantastic. What you got in store for me? Oh, you guys haven't tasted the cappuccinos? No. So leave them there if you want to have a taste of these now, and I'll uh, continue on. I'm going to set up with a signature drink. Sorry for that misinstruction there. I'll explain what I'm doing here when you guys are done. Take off, steal off, night away. So it's done, it's done. That's good. Ruki, yours is switched around as well. Okay, so uh, let's move straight into it. So what I've done here is add multidextrin to the espresso. Now this is going to enhance the bitterness. Let's go up there. And thank you very much. Thank you. It's going to enhance the bitterness, but then as the espresso starts to, starts to cool, it's going to change that texture and that consistency. Um, so what I'd like you to do is give it a quick stir. And here I just want you to focus on the dark chocolate bitterness, all right? Let's give it a quick stir and then have one sip. skip those solutions this time, all right? All right, so up to 80% of our taste is made up of what we smell, and this impact on our taste can be huge. So this vapor here I have is a sweetness vapor, and that's 100% mango puree. What I'd like you to do is when I put that in front of you, just have a quick smell of it. And what I'd like you to do is pour the contents of that first vessel into the second vessel now and then give it a quick swirl, and then have one quick sip. Here you're gonna find that sweetness really pops, the bitterness is pushed back, and as it cools again, the texture is gonna change. It's gonna start to get syrupy and thicker. So now, we have the acidity. Now this is a uh, vapor from um, passion fruit puree. So again, what I'd like you to do is just have a smell of the glass find that passion fruit there, that acidity. So now, pour the contents from that second vessel into the third. Give it a quick swirl. All right, then have one sip now. So now what you're gonna find is that uh, that passion fruit really starts to pop. And this is just through, through smelling that passion fruit as well. The kiss consistency has started to change again. So, uh, as I said earlier, in earlier on, uh, before the espresso, uh, we, we try our best as baristas to be able to change and control our uh, parameters within coffee to affect 
flavor and perception of flavor. But today, from the moment that you put on the headphones till this point in time, I want it to affect uh, that perception by th uh, through your experience. So by shaping your experience, I hope to help you understand what I taste in this coffee. La Butera is a fully washed mix of Cotura, Castillo, and San Bernardo varieties uh, from one single farm located around 1,500 meters above sea level in the Wheeler region of Colombia. This is a truly sweet, fantastic, and rich coffee. Judges, thank you very much for your time. I'm gonna leave you with one last song and then just have one last sip of the espresso. All right, thank you very much, guys, Tom. Let's hear it for the World Barista Championship semi-finalist number 11, Mr. John Gordon, United Kingdom Barista Champion. How was that? How was that? Uh, it you was. rolled with it. <laughs> you rolled with it. I, I, I think always the mark of a good barista is when something it doesn't quite go to plan. Yeah. To still be able to roll with it and to still finish with nine seconds to spare is pretty awesome. Yeah. So, well um, done, well yeah. done. Thank you. That, it's amazing. I mean, I've seen, I think I've pretty much seen all of your performances. No, I actually, I didn't see the UK one this year, but I've seen all of your performances before that. Yeah. Um, each time you come back with something new, tell me about this sensory thing where you're kind of shutting the judges off from the external influences and why you wanted to do that. Um, I think the job is hard enough for the judges as is. Um, let me just make sure I'm off. Yeah. Uh, and so, I mean, there's so much going on around here, um, and I wanted to be able to just lock them away or, or minimise as much as I could of what was going on around them to be able to, to help them just focus on what they're doing. I'm intrigued by the aromatics as well. There seems to be a few people that have come yeah. with this aromatics um, this year. It, it's year of the table setting, but also year of the aromatics. What, what inspired you to do that? Um, I find that uh, smells really, really put me off uh, when, when tasting and stuff like that. So uh, rather than trying to... Um, I basically, I wanted to use aroma to, to enhance taste as opposed to actually physically putting something in coffee to, to enhance that taste. So you, how many years is it you've been in London now? Uh, six, seven. Six, seven about. years. So that accent, I'm sure a few people locally will know where that accent, where, where, where was it you, you lived before London? Uh, here, I was born, uh, born in Melbourne. Uh, so a homeboy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, in London, we both know there's a kind of a, a real bubbling, emerging, exciting coffee scene. Yep. What do you think are the, the main drivers of, of, of how coffee shops have kind of come from nowhere in, in, in your time in London? I'm sure you can imagine, you can remember what a desert it was and how it's come yeah. forward so much. Um, in all honesty, I think it's the people that have driven it further, um, people like yourself, um, James and Annette, um, and, and a lot of other newer roasters that are popping up more and more. Um, it's you guys that have literally pushed the boundaries um, in the UK full stop, I think. I disagree. I think it's baristas like yourself. Well, well let's hear it one more time for the your barista champion of the United Kingdom, our WBC semi-finalist number 11, Mr. John Gordon!